It's Sunday afternoon, I thought I would come out to the shop and spend a little time working on my mini jet boat. And right now I'm dealing with what many have said is one of the more difficult aspects of doing this conversion. It has to do with the jet pump. You can see the impeller right there. The problem I have right now is that this came out of the Yamaha Wave Runner and the drive shaft's too long for this boat application. So I've got my new drive shaft here. Take a look at that baby. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And you can see it's considerably shorter. And you think, well, all I have to do is just take this drive shaft out here and put this one in. <laughs> well, I remember getting on the internet thinking, well, how do you do this? And I saw a bunch of videos of guys complaining how hard this is. One guy says, I broke my vice. Another guy says, well, good luck. You know, he didn't really show you how to do it. He just said, you know, I had to go take it somewhere and, and we hammered away and beat on this thing. And finally got the old impeller off. Most of the time, people dealing with this issue are just changing their impeller. If you look right here, this is like a nut on the forward section of the impeller, which is 27 millimeter or one and one sixteenth. So you can get a wrench on here and, and loosen this because right in here are a bunch of threads and they're reverse threads, they're left-hand threads, so you have to be really careful. We're gonna be pretending like we're tightening it <laughs> in order to get this off. And I asked somebody, what's the procedure for doing this? They said, well, just download the Yamaha service manual and it will show you how to get this impeller off and the shaft out. And I did that. <laughs> and you know what the manual shows? They don't even say anything. They just show a picture of someone with a wrench on here and this end right here locked up in a vise. Because you've got to have some way to, to stop the shaft from rotating when you try to loosen this impeller nut. I thought, well, that was helpful, especially after I just watched a video where someone said they tried to do that and they broke their vise. Can you imagine how much force you're dealing with? And you're certainly not going to do it with this wrench here. That you would have to apply here with this and the vise to break the vise. So I started doing a little more research and I found out, aha, there's a special tool. Look at the special tool. And this special tool has the spline, goes right on over the end of the shaft like that. Now you can take this now and anchor it into a vise because you're not gonna damage these splines. So I said, that's neat. We'll just put this in a vise and get the wrench and go to it. So we tried this uh, yesterday. I think the service manual actually shows an open end wrench. I can't tell for sure because it's such a little teeny pick. <laughs> But you get an open end wrench on here with this. We're probably talking over 150 foot pounds. I think some of these are probably close to 200 foot pounds of torque. Because over time, with you hammering your jet ski, oh, as you get power, word. you know, this is tightening up. So, this is a picture that you'll see in the Yamaha service manual with the shaft mounted up into the vise with this special coupling tool here, and someone applying force here to turn the impeller clockwise to loosen. And so, well, we started out with an opening wrench like the picture, I think. <laughs> but I think after about three or four tugs, we realized we were going to spread the, <laughs> probably the jaws. We realized we were gonna have to use the box end. Okay, you need to be able to hold down tight on the housing while you're applying force with a wrench. The other vice we had over here and we had to get up on the table, we were jumping up and down with this with our foot. So the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, this probably needs a little more leverage. And I even tried the old trick where you take another box end wrench and you can hook it on the end of the open end like this and you can push down on this. But look at that, look at the spring in that. One of the problems you got is you got some torsional movement here. So you don't really have a solid shaft that you can do the old snap trick because it's just twisting, it's just bouncing. What I decided was I was gonna have to get something that would give me an extension about four to five feet long 
and apply heat to the impeller. So enter the special tool we're going to use. It's a one and one sixteenth inch combination wrench and we just cut the end off. And then to get the leverage that we need, I'm going to use this long pipe like this. So we're going to get that locked up in the vise and we're going to apply heat to the impeller and then get out on the end of this pipe and give it a very solid, firm push. And hopefully that's going to break that impeller free of the shaft. The center section here holds the bearings for the back end of the shaft. You can see it's in three pieces and all held together by these really long bolts. When you remove the four bolts that hold this assembly together, you're going to be surprised that you may not be able to easily get the section separated because they use a sealant. This one you can see has some tabs on it where you can have pry points. So I'm going to see if I can find the pry points for this forward section. Okay, there's a pry point right there. And we've got another one up here. This will give you a pretty good idea why you don't want to use too much sealant when you put it back together. <laughs> you can probably never get it apart. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and try this without heat. We've got it mounted up tightly in the vise. We're going to stay away from the vise. We've got safety glasses on in case this vise does break. Joel's here and he's going to provide the torque. And we're going to go ahead and see if we can break this loose without heat. You've got flex in the shaft here. That's part of the problem. Okay, so I'm going to lean a little bit more. A little bit more. You can kind of feel when you're going too much. Wow, you got about 200 pounds of torque there, right? Probably more. More. Okay, hold up. Okay. Let's go ahead and try the heat. Yeah, that's good. It's quite early the next morning and I'm back at it. I'm out here thinking about how in the world am I going to get this off. Just didn't feel right about continuing. You could just feel that something was going to break, possibly even the vice. We were kind of standing back. This was an amazing amount of torque we were applying. So we called it off. And I woke up at five this morning and I said, you know, I know what the problem is. I just need to figure out how to solve it. Look over here, I got my hand here, and it, you know, there's a little bit of movement in the vise, but if I put my hand right in here, I can actually feel the shaft start to twist. So this area right in here is not solid, and you can't get a good snap with the wrench like you do a lot of times, it's just bouncing. So I got to thinking, I've got to figure out a way to grab this shaft closer to the impeller. You know, maybe they should have put the spline down here for the special tool, and then it would have been easy to get off. So I got to thinking, here it was, lying in bed at 5 a.m. I'm, okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna grab this with something. And it suddenly dawned on me, I've got this great big heavy vise, and maybe <laughs> we could use this to put a little more grip on this shaft to try to break this free. It may put just a few small marks in that drive shaft. That's not a problem. Now when I twist on this down, it's going to rock the vise. So I think I'll try to put something right in here to keep that from rocking. Let's see if that minimizes the twist. We'll call it a torsion test to see if we have any improvement here. Oh yeah, look at that. It's still moving a little bit, but it's not bouncing as much. You can see the extra weight of this vise is keeping the shaft from twisting so much. So now I'll go ahead and apply some heat.
start to smell <laughs> burning. You know you're getting hot enough. Now I'm right out here about a little over four feet out from the shaft with this bar. And I'm going to really lean on it. And then I'm going to give it a little... <laughs> Woo! We got it! Sometimes you just have to use a bigger wrench. And heat. Don't forget the heat, okay? That's a real key here. Once you break this free, it just comes right off. <laughs> and you'll notice there's even some grease on the threads. So you'd think, well, if there's grease on the threads, uh, you know, why didn't it come, come off so easy? I do want to warn you, you don't want to use too much heat because you can damage the seal. Of course, we're going to be pulling the shaft out. So I'm just going to install a new seal here for peace of mind. And we'll also put a lot more grease in those bearings. So I hope those of you out there that have uh, Yamaha jet skis and are doing uh, Yamaha engines and mini jet boats, you find this a little helpful. You won't have to break a vise or wreck your arm when trying to remove your impeller from your jet pump. We press the old axle out and putting the new axle in is not that bad. You can actually use the nut to help you pull it back into place. Notice we repack the bearings, we replace the seal, we protecting this from dirt, but we slip that new axle into the housing and now we're going to use the nut to pull that shaft the rest of the way into the bearings. You can see here how much we have to pull the shaft into the housing. We've got it locked up in the vise here with a special tool. Now we're going to use a 27 millimeter or inch and 1 16th socket. And we're going to take that nut and pull that shaft all the way in. But keep in mind we're not done there. When we're all done, we're going to pull the nut out. Clean the threads, apply red thread locker, and reinstall the nut and torque it. That's one nut you do not want to loosen up. You know, you wouldn't think installing a new drive shaft in one of these would be such a big pain. <laughs> but we got it in, we got it torqued, we filled uh, the cap here with the appropriate grease. It's like I said, we're, we're using thread locker everywhere, just like the back. So now I can install the impeller, and that's a lot easier to install <laughs> than remove. Well, you gotta remember this is, which way are we gonna go, righty tighty? No, lefty tighty. Just need a big box wrench for this because the manual says to torque it about 54 foot pounds. Well, I doubt very many of us have a torque wrench that can handle this application. So, in this case, you're just going to have to feel it. You just kind of remember if you don't get it tight enough, it'll tighten it for you. <laughs> so, I'm going to feel about 50 foot pounds here. You say, okay, I know a lug bolt is about 70 to 80 in a car, so not quite that tight, all right? Come on. Okay. Notice how I've cleaned all these mating surfaces. If you remember, this was all sealed up with silicon. It was just a pain to clean it up. And when I reassemble these sections of the jet pump, I am not going to be using silicone sealant like they did at the factory because I'll probably be taking this apart a few times especially if I have to take it apart out on the river it's going to be a lot easier if I don't have to deal with that silicone but there are a couple places you do need to seal one is where the pump um, here's your pickup water pump here and that spot right there 
will need to be sealed. So I've got the silicone sealant on there. Just a small amount here. You don't want a whole bunch of it going down in your water passage. I've cleaned all the surfaces. I've cleaned the bolts here on a wire wheel and we're going to be using a blue thread locker. I don't want these bolts to come out, but I do want to be able to get them out on the field. All right, let's see how this goes back together. This will be fun. Check this out, isn't that a pretty sight? All bolted back together and I did properly torque these through bolts. Uh, recommendation is 29 foot -pounds. But before we can install this, we have to permanently install the hydro blaster and we're gonna cover that in the next video.